In the previous lecture, we have discussed dealing with characters in a string. And in this lecture, we will discuss processing every character in a string. So talking about dealing with characters in a string, we have seen that we have certain functions that we have for processing characters. Now, when we talk about characters, we are talking about just one character at a time. But we know that strings consist of a combination of characters. So if you want to process every character in a string, then how do we make use of those functions? The first thing that might come to your mind is, we need a way to iterate over all the characters in a string so that we can visit each character and then we can process each of them. So that is what we will discuss mainly in this lecture. So in order to process every character in a string, we will make use of something known as a range for statement. So this is used to iterate through the elements in a given sequence and performs some operation on each value in that sequence. So let's see how it is done and let's first see how is the syntax for this. So the syntax is like this. We have this for keyword and within parenthesis we have the declaration and we have this colon and the expression and then we have the statement that is written below this. We will take examples to make this clear and to see how it works. So here in the first example, let's say that we just want to print each character from a string on a new line. So here we have a string called readme which has a literal hello there stored in it and then I want to print each of these characters on a new line. That means H should be on the first line, E on the second line, L on the third line and so on till E of the there. So in order to do that, we will make use of the range for statement like this. We write the for keyword and here within parenthesis, you can see that I am using a variable called ch. So this is basically to store or to process each character in the string. Okay. And then we are using the auto keyword. That means instead of just specifying it as a character, I am just making use of the auto data type, which would automatically determine what type of data type is this. And it would just assign it to the ch variable. Okay. So basically it is going to be a character, but for our ease of use, we will just make use of the auto keyword. So auto ch. So remember ch is for storing each character and then we have a readme which is followed after this colon. Now readme, what is it? It is the string that we have. So what actually happens is that it is going to iterate over each of the characters in this string called readme and in each iteration, it is going to process each of the character into this variable called ch. Okay. And what is the statement? What are we trying to do here? We just want to print each character on a new line. So we just say C out CH and N line. So in the first iteration, what it would do is it would read the first character from readme. What is the first character in readme? It is H. So it would print H and then it would print a new line. And in the second iteration, it would go over the next character in readme, which is E. And then it would just print that E and a new line and it would go on like that. So let us run this program in Visual Studio Code to get a better understanding. So here I have that same program written down completely in Visual Studio Code. Let me just run this program which is called st underscore ex1.cpp. So as I run this program, you can see all the characters from the string hello there is printed on a new line. H-E-L-L-O space T-H-E-R-E. So that's what we exactly wanted and it worked exactly like we expected. All right, now coming to the second example. Here we want to count the number of punctuation characters in a string. Alright, so remember we had a function that we discussed in the previous lecture which was used to find out whether a character is a punctuation character or not which is called isPunct. So we are going to make use of that in this program here. So let's see how to do it. So here we have a string called readme and then it stores a literal hello comma there followed by three exclamation marks. And here I am declaring an integer called punct underscore count which is initialized to zero and we will use this variable to store the number of punctuation characters that are there. Now again, we need to iterate over each of the characters in this string. So we need to make use of the range for statement. So we will say for and again, we'll make use of the auto keyword and ch is the variable that is going to process each of the characters. So ch and then after the colon, we give the name of the string that is readme. So it is going to iterate over each of the characters in this string here and at each iteration, it is going to store it into this variable called ch whose data type is auto determined. Okay. Now next, we have to check in each iteration if that particular character is a punctuation or not. 
So for that we will make use of isPunct function which we discussed in the previous lecture and we are going to pass the character ch into it. Now what would this do? This would return true if it is a punctuation character and it would return false if it is not. Now if it is true then you see that it is inside an if condition that we are using this. So if it returns true then this if condition altogether would become true and it would come to the if statement here which says plus plus punct count which basically is incrementing the variable called punct count which is an integer which was initially assigned 0. So whenever it encounters a punctuation character this punct count variable would be incremented by 1. Alright. So it would process and then finally when it reads all the characters in this string it would break from this for loop and it would print the number of punctuation characters in the string readme is equal to whatever is there in this punct count variable. Alright, so I hope you understood this. Let us go and run the program to see if it is working as expected. So here on Visual Studio Code you can see we have the same program that I have shown you in this slide. So let me run this program whose name is st underscore ex2.cpp. Okay, so the output says number of punctuation characters in hello there equal to 4. So as you can see there is one comma here and three exclamation marks. So a total of four punctuation characters are present in this string and it is displayed correctly. So we see the program works exactly as expected. Okay so coming to the third example. Here we need to convert all characters of a string to uppercase. So in the previous lecture we have come across a function called to upper which would change characters from lowercase to uppercase and we said that the to upper function changes a lowercase letter from lowercase to uppercase and if it is already an uppercase letter then it would leave it unchanged. Okay so here as you can see we have a string called readme that stores hello there and then here we are using the range for statement and we have this variable ch which is used for iterating over each of the characters and then the string readme. And you can see that here we have used the ampersand symbol which is something different that we have not seen in the first and second example. So we'll come to that and here you see I'm saying ch equal to 2 upper ch. That means we are converting this ch to its uppercase form and we are storing that same uppercase form back to the character ch. Okay. And we are saying converted string equal to readme as a final output. Now what is the use of this ampersand ch? Let's see what is the significance of this. If you remember ampersand actually means a reference. So we are actually making use of the ch reference. So we are pointing to its reference and why we do it is because if you can see in the second statement here, here we are assigning the converted uppercase letter to that same ch again. So only if we make use of the reference then we would be able to modify that original character ch and that would be reflected in the original string readme. So if you don't make use of the reference here, we won't be able to change the original string readme. So it is very important that you make use of the reference here which would point to the original character ch that means it would change it in its address itself. So that the next time when it is called or the next time when it is being accessed then we know that it is in the address that we changed. So that would reflect in the original string itself. Okay. So let's run this program in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working as expected. So here on Visual Studio Code I have that same code written down with the complete program. The name of the program is st underscore ex3.cpp. Let's run this. So as you can see the output is converted string equal to hello there and you can see that it is all in uppercase form. So it worked exactly as we expected. Now what if we don't make use of this reference here. For example let me remove this reference or ampersand and save this program and if I run it again. You see now in this case it could not actually change it to uppercase. So what happened is that it was changing each character in this line but it is not affecting the original string readme. So in order to make the changes in the original string readme we have to make sure that we are accessing it through the reference like this. So only then it would work as expected. Alright so I hope with that you understood what is the importance of making use of reference over here. 
Alright, so with that we come to the end of this lecture where we basically dealt with processing every character in a string. That means we were trying to process each and every character in a string and for that we made use of the range for statement and also we have taken some examples of the functions that were used for processing characters. So I hope this lecture was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.